As we start, I would like to acknowledge that I come from Toronto in the East End, which is the traditional lands of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ashinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Uh, one of the things that I and my family are doing is learning what we can about these treaties so that we understand the history and intent of what was supposed to happen around the caretaking of this land. And I invite you and your community to do the same thing for where you are. So I'm Eric Lofort, I'm the foundation lead and I'll be your host for today's educational webinar. Uh, this webinar will walk through the Seeds of Hope grant application step by step. Um, whether you're looking to apply or you're currently applying for Seeds of Hope grant, I think this will be a great learning opportunity for you gain insight and allow you to ask any questions that you may have. So I welcome you to type any questions that you have in the chat as we go, and we will address those as much as we can during the Q&A portion at the end. I ask if you have a question specifically re in regards to a question on the application, if you could just note that question number so I can better address it at that, that time. So without further delay, I'm gonna share my screen and we can jump right into it. So this is the start of the application. So you will all see this um, start screen once you've logged in and created a user name and profile. Um, I am applying, the screen you see is if I'm applying as an individual as yourself, I am not looking at it as an admin. So this, what you are seeing is what you should see as well. When you go in, it, every screen will show you the question in the middle, and then in the right-hand margin, it will show you the questions coming up and the questions that you've asked. You can answer the question right here, or you can skip to a question in the queue if you would like, or you can also always click back in this queue as well to see uh, if what you've answered in the past or go back to answer that. Each box will tell you what part you were in. It'll give you the name of the, que the, the question it's asking itself and a space to answer. Once you're done answering, you can always click next and it will save that answer as you go. In turn, you can also click save and quit whenever you want. Uh, so you don't have to sit down and do this all in one shot. You can take it as uh, you need to. Um, as you can tell, our application is 100% paperless and digital. Uh, for the That's environmental purposes, one. But for two other reasons is, one, if you have any questions about the application process or while you're doing the application, you can always reach out to the foundation, myself and other staff and that we can be able to help you and look at your application in real time through our portal. Um, and also in turn, it gives you the power to submit when you want and ensure that all your answers are, uh, all your questions are answered, everything you want to attach to include it in it, um, and so nothing is ever lost in the shuffle. So I'm going to start going through all the questions and giving you examples as we go. So the very first question is name of the organization. This is quite simply what organization is applying uh, to the grant, um, who would be responsible for the project? Who would be and who would be receiving the funds if awarded? Question two is the primary contact. So this is who we, I would write only one name in here. While we understand some projects have many different leads, try to give us one name of the person who we can contact. So this would be a person of, if we had a question, who best would we reach out to and speak to about that question? Uh, who best would we learn more from? The next question is the title of this individual, the primary contact. So this could be a chair of a committee, a minister, an executive director. Again, this just helps paint a picture of who we are speaking to, who are you asking questions to. The organization mailing address. What is the mailing address to this organization? Where possible, we, we ask that you refrain from writing in um, a treasurer's personal mailing address. Um, we like to have the address of the actual organization itself. Um, of course, there are always circumstances and if there is something a reason why you think your organization mailing address is best not to include, please reach out to us and we'll talk about best steps. Next is second part of the mailing address question, city, province, postal code, pretty straightforward. The phone number, how best to reach you by phone. Fax number where applicable is 2023. I'm not quite sure how many faxes people are using these days, but we, if you have it one, we'd love to have it. Email, what is the email of the primary contact? This would be our primary source of contacting and reaching out. So it's really important to get the right email put in here. Website, so what is your organization's website? We can use this to learn more about your organization. 
or if you reference your website somewhere in the application, it allows us to have it at the click of our fingers. The next question is your charitable registration number. Uh, the foundation, we can only grant through Seeds of Hope to registered Canadian charities. And so it's important for us to have that registration number on hand. In this question, we've provided a link to where you can find it on Canada Revenue Agency's website. You can also find your charitable registration number using Canada Helps. Um, and if you're having any difficulty past that, you can always uh, phone us or email us and we'd be happy to help you find that number. Next question is, have you ever received granting monies from the United Church or the United Church of Canada Foundation before? Um, this is an important question to help us understand where our relationship starts. Is this the beginning of a relationship with your organization or is this a pre-existing relationship? Um, and this could be monies, whether it's um, grant support from past or mm -hmm. maybe mission service dollars, um, but just giving us a sense, have you, yes or no, been awarded money? Depending on which one you click, it will give you a drop down menu to provide further information. So a date when that money was had, where that money came from. So for example, maybe you received a Seeds of Hope grant in years past, and that's where you fill in that, that information. The next question is, this application has been approved by, and then it gives you a series of things. So in some cases, you we assume that this application would have been reviewed and approved by somebody. Um, it's not just one person saying, I want to fill out this application. I'm taking a shot in the dark. The idea is that somebody has reviewed it and looked over it and said, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's go for it. Um, let's uh, apply for something and let's move this forward. The next is a, the next series of questions is basically who is signing off on this application? Who's agreeing that everything is written uh, as it should be? So this is typically this name of this organization would be the same as the organization applying, but not necessarily. So for example, um, if you don't have a registration number yet and the region is kind of applying on your, on your behalf, maybe this is where the region would put in their information and their uh, organizational name. The next is the name of the person that is signing off on this project, their title, and then the following is them signing. You would simply, as the applicant, type in their name and click next. Once you submit the application, you will receive an email saying, hey, you have signed off on this. If, the per if you, the person, or the person uh, writing the application is different than the signing officer, that is okay. You can write their name, and then we ask that you forward that email confirmation to the person that is signing off on it so they have it on their records that they are the people that have signed off on this. And then the date, last question in this section is the date of the application approved. So when was this approved? This could be the day that you submitted or it could be before that. The next question is telling us what's your regional council your organization is a member of. Um, this is important just so we can geographically know exactly where you're part of, but it also allows us to figure out trends so we can see, hey, this application that's in support of this project is part of this region. And we've noticed there's a lot of these projects coming in the region. It allows us to better work with the region and maybe also secure and source other funding or work with you on that as well. How did you hear about Seeds of Hope? So there's a bunch of options there that you can click. You can click, click all that apply. This is really helpful for us to know where people are hearing from us to either continue promoting in that way or we can notice, hey, you know what? A lot of people haven't seen our Facebook posts. Maybe we need to push that a little bit further or change our messaging. I mean, the goal with this is learning how people are hearing about us so we can do a better job at getting to people to know them that this support is out there. Did you contact the foundation staff before you submitted your application? This is a yes or no question. Um, it will provide it, depending on your answer, it'll give you a drop down menu saying, how did you and when did you talk to them? Uh, it is not a prerequisite to talk to staff before, so don't feel that you have to say yes or no. Um, it's just, again, another touch point of where is this relationship with your organization? Is it new? Is it pre-existing? And it gives the committees a good sense of that. Next is, if you're awarded a grant, would you be interested in receiving support or mentor mentorship? Again, this allows us to kind of figure out where, what your comfortability as an organization is to uh, work with other groups or learn off other groups. So this is a really good one if um, us as staff notice, hey, your organization is doing this really cool project um, and we know this other group has done a similar project that you'd be open to 
being connected to learn off of each other. Again, it doesn't, it's not a prerequisite to say yes to this question. Part two. So this is the second part of the application and it's starting to ask the funding cycle. Uh, this is for us to organize the applications appropriately. Right now we are in the spring cycle and then we do offer a fall cycle as well. The fall cycle opens up in mid-June and the deadline is for uh, is October 15th of each year. Uh, but if you are applying this round, you will simply click spring. What granting funds are you applying to? The Seeds of Hope granting program is made up of a series of long-term funds that all have different criteria and uh, to allow granting. So please select all that apply to your project. It might be that your project is only focusing on uh, housing, for example, but it could be that you're focusing on housing and anti-poverty and there's children and youth. So click whatever applies and that allows us to again, get a full sense of what is your project trying to do? Who is it benefiting? Uh, and uh, what, are you, what are you trying to get out there? Project title seems pretty straightforward, but we do get a, a variety of different things. What do you call your project? Uh, it might have an official title name, but you also might use something that is just very direct so everyone knows exactly what your project is doing. But simply, what do you call your project? What can we refer to your project as? I'm, I'm, I'm almost at the end of this lentil soup. Um, is this a new project? So this is a yes or no question. Um, new means different for everyone. Uh, what I consider new might not be what the next considers new, but what a rule of thumb is, um, what phase of your project is it in? Is it only a couple years old? Is it something where you've done research and groundwork into, or you just launched it last year? I would all, all consider that new, even though it's already started to a degree. Where you would write no in this is if it's a question, uh, if it's a, a project that's been going on for several years and it's kind of just, we need support to continue moving this project along. Is your project being carried out in Canada? Uh, we can only grant funds through Seeds of Hope to projects that are being carried out in, can in Canada. So it is important to know uh, whether this project is or isn't. If it isn't, please reach out to us and we can talk about other options that you may have outside of Seeds of Hope. The targeted implement implementation date. This is when is your project starting? So this could be uh, in the future. So you've submitted the application today and you could say it's starting in two months, or this could have started a year ago. Just give us a sense of where, what in the timeline where your project started. Um, similarly, this is when is your project going to be completed? So some projects have a lifespan of a year. We are doing X and we expect it to be completed by Y. If it's an ongoing project, something that you're expecting to see continue for several years down the line, give us a couple years of a completion date. And then maybe it's important to note somewhere else in the application, hey, this is an ongoing project. We expect this phase of the project to be completed at this date. This question is asking your project team members. And so this is who is running the project. So this can be the leadership group of it. So you can give us specific names. So you can say in this column, Mary, and Mary is the executive director of the project. And John, John is our procurement officer, or John is in charge of getting uh, chairs for the event that we're doing. In turn, you can also be uh, more generic, where you can say, instead of a name, you can say uh, our board of trustees, and then what their role is. You can also do a mix or match of that. Again, uh, applications like Seeds of Hope, or a lot of grant applications for that matter, are really built for to cover a huge swath of different type of projects. Um, and so it's really, there's a little bit of leeway of how you answer the question because it's difficult to specifically uh, narrow down uh, questions for a huge variety of uh, projects. Project description. So this is a uh, really important part of the application. I think of this question as what is your elevator pitch? Write this as if, the person reading it has never heard about your project before, don't know anything about you or what you're trying to do. Be as clear as and concise as you possibly can. Um, try to answer the question that's being asked and review it and say, is this what my project is or is this just the extras in it? Again, I should be able to, or any reviewing body should be able to read this question 
and know right at the drop of the hat what your project is. So throughout this uh, webinar, I'm going to use the example of a United Church camp installing gender neutral washrooms as their uh, proposed project. So in the project description, they might say, um, by the summer of 2024, we would like to install four gender neutral washrooms, which will help us do X, Y, Z. Again, it's really clear and concise. I can read it and say, yes, this is what this group is trying to accomplish. Project uniqueness. So what makes your project innovative? What makes it unique? What makes it unique and innovative to yourself? And what makes it unique and innovative to the area? Um, is it? And so that's where you would answer that section. So um, for my example, you might say, uh, no United Church camp or organization in the area has gender neutral washrooms uh, available. Um, and we feel it's important to have these to be inclusive. That would be the uniqueness. Um, you can answer these questions in bullet form or you can answer them in paragraph form. It's completely up to you and what is best suits your project. Project goals and objectives. This is what are the goals and objectives of your project? So this can again be written in bullet form or this can be in long form. Um, but so for my example, this a goal could be uh, install gender neutral washrooms by 2024. Uh, then another goal and objective could be uh, to secure contracts for the installation of these washrooms. They can be, they should, the best case should be attainable one, but also um, a combination of short-term and long-term goals. The idea is if it's a sustainable project that you've looked and taken into account the many years that it will be around. Plan for achieving the goals and objectives. So the question before, you just told us what they are. How are you going to achieve them? So if my goal is to um, get a contractor on board to install the washrooms by the end of summer 2023, uh, my plan for achieving that is to submit proposals to various contractors in the area. So how are you going to achieve what, you've, what your goals and objectives are that you just previously messaged? The plan for project implementation and delivery. This is the outline. Uh, a time of timeline of uh, what you have, what your plan is. So give us um, some details and steps that you are taking to ensure that you'll be able to meet those projects. Project beneficiaries. So this is simply who's benefiting from the project. Um, keep in mind the full diversity of your community, and it's probably not just one group of people. It can be a, a wide variety. It could be very localized, but it could be much more regionally based. So you could say, in our direct com community, we feel um, children and youth will be able to, uh, will benefit from this. But we also feel that the geographic area will, will benefit from this because they'll see us as an example of inclusion. So again, who's benefiting from this project? What steps have been taken to work with and communicate with these be beneficiaries? So tell us, what steps have you taken? Have you reached out to these groups? Have you reached out to these beneficiaries? Is your project something that is being asked by the community or something that you think that the, this community just wants? Um, give us examples of that. Um, it's really important to, when launching any project, that it's not just in uh, looking inwards, that you are to also looking at an outwards approach to the project as well and talking to the direct people that you think would benefit from a project. Does your project address any of the United Church of Canada Foundation's four priorities? The United Church of Canada has addressed that we have four main priorities. One is anti-racism, one is reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, the other is climate justice, and the fourth one is communities of faith. Does your project fall into those? Again, they don't have to, but it's good to know if they do. And again, it helps answering this question. What we're really trying to find out is uh, what is the full scope of your project? What have you thought about your project outside of the nitty gritty of it, what, what is the large picture of it? And this is a similar question to that, is which of the UN sustainable development goals are being impacted by this idea? Again, this is a great process for us to get a sense of the greater picture of your project, but I think it's also a really great exercise as the applicant to look at your project as well and say, what are we doing with this project outside of the direct obvious implications? What else is there? And so you can click all that uh, apply. And you can also visit the UN's website to read more about this project if you're unfamiliar with it. 
examples of demonstrated support. So this is listing your partners, letters of support that you might include, um, the details of the community involvement. Um, this is just an idea of saying outside of your of the applying organization, who else wants this? Who else is asking for this? Who else is in the team of, of doing this project? This question is a simple upload up to five of these uh, external pieces. So these could be letters of support. These could be research documents that you have that support your idea. Um, it's really up to you what you want to include. We only ask that there's up to five uh, that you do include. Uh, this is not a requirement of the application by any means. So if you don't have letters of support, that is okay. They are not needed. Um, but if you do include letters of support, it's great to, again, have those letters from the full breadth of your community and not just direct people linked to it. Um, letters from partners are always great as well. And if you do include more than one letter, it's nice that those letters to support maybe touch on different aspects of your project and why they think it's so important, rather than just having five of the same letters over and over again. Um, they are nice to paint the full picture of your project, give a little bit more color to it, uh, but by no means is it required for the application. How would you recognize the support if you received a grant from us? So this could be simply, we will post on social media or we'll put it in a bulletin or in our local newspaper, we'll make an announcement of the support. Um, this support is less important to us from a vanity per, uh, I, perspective. Uh, it's really great for other groups to see the support that is given. We can promote granting as much as possible, but it's really the testimony of people that have done something successful and are doing something that really inspires others to do something similar or different uh, and to get the grant support they need. Additionally, some people want to start things and think, oh, I, I, we don't have the funding to do it. And then when they see organizations receive funding elsewhere, they might go, ah, oh, you know what? There is someone out there that can help. So it's really important for us to know how will you spread that word? How will you inspire others to do similar to what you have done? A list of volunteer support. So this is a list of your volunteers. It's similar to a question before, but this is really who's giving their time. Um, and again, you can write very specific names. So you could say, again, Mary's giving this many hours of her time to do it, and John is giving this many. Or you can simply say, this group of individuals are giving this amount of time. So maybe it's a fundraising team, or maybe, for my example, it's um, your contractor is volunteering some of their time rather than charging uh, the full time. So again, it just paints a picture who's involved in the project. Anticipated measurable outcomes. So this reaches back to your goals and objectives that you wrote before. The way I, this is one of the questions we get most is what do you want in this section? And the best I describe this is, write it in this way. My goal is X, therefore my measurable outcome is Y. So for my example of the gender neutral washrooms, my goal is to install three uh, gender neutral washrooms by summer of 2024. Therefore, we expect to see camper registration up by three the following summer. Or we, our goal is to install the gender neutral washrooms. Therefore, we expect to see other organizations follow suit in inclusiveness. So you're going to be reaching back to the previous question. Um, a lot of these questions do do that. They're saying, you touched on a little bit here, now expand on that. And that is really what this question is trying to get at. So again, my goal is X, therefore my outcome is gonna be Y. These can be very specific as in the example of camper registrations up, or they can be much more broad where uh, they expect to see other organizations to follow suit. Plan to assess these outcomes. So how are you going to ass assess the outcomes that you just wrote to us? What is, how are you going to measure that? So for my example, maybe it's uh, if we expect to see camper numbers to raise, we can easily see if they did or not by looking at our registration throughout the following summers. Or if the outcome is we're saying we expect to see other groups to take uh, to also follow suit, Maybe it's we will reach out and see what other groups in our area have fallen suit because of our example, whether that's um, through just word of mouth or if you're actively doing it. So again, how are you going to assess what you previously just wrote? 
the time frame for achieving these outcomes. This is quite literally um, a timeline of what you think um, when you can get those done. So you'd write the time frame. So you could say summer 2024 in my example, or summer 2025, and then tell us what that outcome is going to be. Uh, these can be very specific and tight to the launch of your project, or they could be several years down the line, depending on what you wrote. So part four, uh, this is the expenses portion of our application and the, basically the money aspect of it. Much like the description being the elevator pitch being an extremely important part of the application, this is as well. It's important that your numbers line up and make sense. That being said, we do not expect you to know to the penny everything that is going on because they are typically the start and new project. So you don't necessarily know that information, but we ask that you use your best estimate with the knowledge that you have at the time of submission. So this question is, how much are you requesting from Seeds of Hope? How much money are you looking for? Please note that the Seeds of Hope granting program can grant only upwards of to 50% of a project's overall cost. So if you say our project is gonna cost $20,000, you can only request up to $10,000 from Seeds of Hope. This is the project revenues table. It seems, it seems rather daunting, but it's actually pretty straightforward. In the far left column, it's a breakdown of the revenue sources. So organization funds. So these are funds that your organization may or may not have committed to the project. Other United Church of Canada support. Other grants. This could be you have other grants in the pipeline from other organizations. Other fundraising, this could be uh, fundraising efforts you have, whether that's approaching donors directly or doing things like a fair where you're raising money, um, that would go there. Funding from partners, this would be, if you have any partners, are they supplying any funding as well? So that could be, for my example, the contractor says, you know what, I'll give you $5,000 worth of my time instead of charging you the full rate. And then again, we ask you to repeat the number of that you were asking uh, from us. It will total everything at the end. Please ensure that this number matches the number from the previous uh, question. The next column, so this column is just how much money. So organization, you can say, you know what, our organization is giving $5,000 and we don't have any other support. Uh, we have maybe two grant, other grants in the pipeline for a total of $10,000. So we type that in there. The next column is simply, is this money confirmed, yes or no? It's important to note that we don't require the money to be confirmed to award funding. We just want to get a sense of, is this money in hand? Has it been promised? Or is it really just something out there? So for example, you can say, yep, our organization is giving $5,000. Yes, we've confirmed it. And the date that it was confirmed was March 30th, where in my granting other grants category, we can say, you know what, we have two grants out there for 5,000 each. Uh, no, they aren't. We don't know if we're gonna get them yet because we're gonna find out in October of uh, October of 2023. So that's all that's asking. Again, it will tally everything up at the bottom. So you can see, you said you have 5,000 in organization funds, you have 10,000 in other funds. And we're gonna say, we're asking for $10,000 and a total of 25,000. So you were telling me in this table that your project, you estimate it to be around $25,000 uh, to run the program. The next table is echoing what was just done. So it's using the same column as a far left column in the previous uh, table. So it's saying organizational funds, other grants, uh, other United Church support, fundraising, funding from partners. And now it's just asking you more specifically, where is that money going to be coming from? So if you said you had five, in the previous table, you said you had $5,000 in organizational funds, uh, you might hear say that is coming from the, for my example, you can say that is coming from the camping renovation uh, fund that we have. Um, the other grants, you can say you said you expect $10,000 or you've requested for $10,000 of your budget from there. And here you can say uh, that money is coming from uh, my local community foundation granting program, or that is coming from my municipality's granting program. So that's where you tell us there. 
The next part is the project expenses. So this is what are your project expenses broken down into these four, four categories. This should total the same total as your other one. So I think we had $25,000. So you estimate that your project staff will cost X amount to run the program and the project materials and supplies will be Y amount and publicity will be another amount and other will be the other. So this is just giving us kind of a general idea of where the money is slotting in for your overall project. You said it's going to cost 25000 Where can we expect to see that money falling? This table is major expenses. So unlike the other one, this might probably will not total your $25,000. This isn't asking you to, <laughs> we're not asking you to nickel and dime every single project. Um, while it's great that the toaster you might buy is going to cost $10.99, that isn't what this question is. This is really saying what is going to cost the bulk of the project. So for my gender neutral washrooms at a United Church camp, the expense might be um, contractor fees. And then I would put the number there. Or the expense could be um, building supplies, and it could be there. If you were applying to run an event, you might say the hall rental space. That's going to cost us a huge amount of money. So this is just, this isn't saying what every little piece is, just what is the major, major project expenses of, of your project. Focus on applied for applied funding. So this question is, how are you going to spend the money that is awarded to you if awarded? So um, for my example, you could say, we'd be using the Seeds of Hope grant money to help pay for the cost of the contractor and promotion of our uh, gender neutral washrooms to the community so they can take advantage of it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Just be as concise and specific as you can, um, knowing that that might not be the case down the line as the project moves on. Um, but we just ask you to kind of think about where would the money be spent. The last real question is proposed plans for revisions if funding is unavailable. So this is essentially asking, if you are not awarded Seeds of Hope granting money, what will you do? It is really easy to say, well, our project just won't happen. I would really stress that that is doing your project a disservice. Um, and it's not making it easy for any granting body to invest and support um, a project with that answer. By saying the project won't go on, it can almost say like, well, it can almost read as the project isn't um, good enough or we don't like it enough to really work for it or see what else we can do. And quite frankly, it's usually not the case. That it, if you really think about what you would do if you didn't get the funding, usually answers come to, well, we'll have to fundraise in a different way or approach people that we didn't think we might have to to fundraise. Or it's our timelines will shift from installing these washrooms in this summer to the next summer, or um, instead of installing four gender neutral washrooms, we'll only be able to install three. So really think about if you were not awarded, what, what would the plan B be? Um, and again, I stress, please refrain from writing, uh, we just won't go ahead. Because I think when people really think about it and drill down, that actually isn't the case. So the next parts of the application are very much like the signing off in the top part. It's really just signatory saying that um, we are aware of the application. We'll use the money as stated. Uh, we agree to write a report at the end of the project. Um, the reports for us are really important to help learn, um, but also to circulate these stories to others, uh, whether the project is successful or not. Again, it goes back to that testimonial. People get really inspired by what others have done. And so using those reports is the best way we can do that. Again, the next is the name of the signing officer. This could be the same signing officer as the first part, and it could be someone else. Uh, rule of thumb is anyone that is signing off on this application should be someone of influence and leadership in your organization. Next, title of the signing officer, signature, same thing. They'll set, you'll, get, you'll get an email saying that this is signed off. Please forward that to the individual and then the date that it was signed. And then the next would be you click and it'll submit to the application on behalf. Um, and it'll, you'll get, you will get a confirmation email once you have submitted the application. So those are the questions. Um, 
the, on, on our application. It is a pretty standard application uh, for grants. It can seem lengthy, um, but it's really not too, too bad, I hope. And I hope this webinar kind of helps you think that. Um, before I jump into um, the questions, I'm sure there are some, uh, I just want to go over a couple just general tips and things that I think are helpful to any applicant that is applying to whether it's Seeds of Hope or any other granting pro uh, program. Um, first, I would suggest to research the organization and the granting program itself. Find out things like what is the granting program's criteria? What are their, what are their due dates? What is required of me to supply this? Also research what is the organization? Are we aligned? Are we trying to accomplish the same thing? Is a granting program trying to accomplish what I am proposing? Those are really good uh, signifiers of whether uh, an application might be successful or if you should even start the process. As I mentioned, it is a rather lengthy um, application itself. So I wouldn't want anyone to ever start something if they just don't make a fit. Um, and then stage two is I would say reach out to um, the organization itself. Introduce yourself. Say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm interested in applying. Um, what do you think about it? Do you see the fit? Are there other opportunities? Are there any tips that you can provide to me? Anything that you think will help me be more successful? Um, us, like many other granting organizations, our goal is to grant as much money as possible. And so the more we can work with you to put you in the best position to be awarded money, uh, we're doing our job. The next piece is answer the question on the application what it is asking. So what I mean by that is it's really easy to read a question and then provide a whole bunch of information. But when you're reviewing that, did you answer what the question is asking? And so always think questions are being asked for a reason and try to be as concise and direct to that question as possible. It's always great to think of keeping it in mind to paint the full picture of your project and who you are, but making sure that including that information isn't at the disservice of your answer being, uh, of, the, of your answer. Um, again, I want to say for us, uh, for numbers and your answers, we're really asking you just to be as direct and we're not looking for firmness necessarily, but use your best estimate at the time of submission. Again, that's whether it's in what you're trying to accomplish in the project or in your financial numbers. Um, one of the, and then my last piece is one of the questions we get most frequently is what do I write for X question or uh, what is uh, the answer you are looking for? And quite frankly, that's an impossible question. Every project is different. Um, and so there is no uniform question. Yes, there's questions like what round are you in? And that's more straightforward. But for goals, objectives, what you're trying to do, there is no right or wrong there. Just speak true to your project, what you're trying to accomplish, and that works best. Um, and so never feel that, oh, I think I'm answering this question wrong, because you probably aren't. Um, so I'm going to jump to some questions. Bear with me as I open up the chat. So Bob asked, can mailing addresses be a post office or a box number? Yes, they certainly can. If that's the mailing address that uh, you use, uh, please uh, include that. Um, we are asked, why or why not? Does the foundation not have one application form overall? Um, Sorry, so it's basically asking why is there not a uniform application covering a whole series of um, questions of, of granting programs. Um, it is something we are investigating. Uh, we definitely see the benefit of having that. It's just we're not quite there yet, but uh, it is something we are actively investigating into making a more universal application that covers a series of different granting programs itself. Um, I, do you recommend talk, talking with grant program officer before applying? Absolutely. Uh, again, I think it's really important to um, 
to reach out to any organization if you're thinking of applying. Again, whether it's to ask questions or simply to introduce yourself, I really think it's a benefit, um, whether that's email or phone, however you want to do that, I think it's really great. Um, I see there's some people asking for our contact info. Um, please reach out to us. You can reach us at grants at United Church, uh, United hyphen church.ca. Um, let me see. Um, Ruth asks under the project volunteers uh, question, will it help to include the experience or background of those volunteers? Yeah, that's, that's really, that can be helpful. Um, it's not necessary. Again, I think it goes back to try to answer the question that's being asked. If as long as what you are including is not getting in the way uh, of the grant reviewer to understand what you're saying, I think that is always helpful. Uh, something I think sometimes when people forget when they're writing applications is that um, your application can be one of hundreds of applications uh, in the pipeline. Uh, so uh, it gets, it's a lot to review. So think of trying to be concise, if only answering the question being asked, and does my information uh, apply to that? When I was a grant writer, I would always review my answers in the lens of, is this good to know or a need to know a need to know is something i have to include a good to know is only something to include if there is space if it makes sense and uh if it doesn't seem out of place with the question um john asks is there a, a maximum grant amount so each fund uh has different max and mins um that is on our website uh you can find that there um, but part of that is what I suggest is always ask for what your project um, needs within reason. Times when expense parts of applications get really muddy is when you can tell someone's trying to shoehorn something in that doesn't quite fit. Uh, it's just reworking numbers and it gives an unsettling feeling when you're reading numbers. So um, there are some maxes. I can, uh, if you email us later, I'll send you those documents. Um, but rule of thumb is ask for what your project needs. If it's really great, we at the foundation try as best as we can to provide you the funding to uh, where available. So um, if there's a way that we can provide funds from different uh, of those long-term funds I spoke about earlier, we will try at our best of our ability to do that. Um, Kelly asks, are there restrictions on expenses that you do not pay? Some grants do not pay for wages. Um, no, uh, we do cover uh, pay for everything. Uh, it's completely up to you and what the project needs. Uh, there are certain things that are not a priority. So for outside of United Church camps, a priority is not for the Seeds of Hope granting program is not to provide funds for um, capital projects and capital campaigns. That being said, it does not disqualify you, disqualify you from applying. It just is not necessarily a priority as is. If that is the project that you are thinking of applying for, I always suggest to reach out to us. Uh, I'm happy to provide other granting options that are specifically for that and also how we can work that request in. So for example, uh, if you're saying, hey, we need to put in a wheelchair ramp because we're an aging congregation and we need accessibility, while well, we understand that and that's great, that isn't the priority of the granting program. But if it's saying, hey, we need a wheelchair ramp. Uh, we are an aging congregation, but we're also offering all this programming that is geared into accessibility and people being able to enter our facility. Then that is the jumping off spot, a uh, spot, a place to talk a little bit more. Uh, so. Kelly asks, what are the dates of grant deadlines for the next round of grants? All the dates for 2023. So Seeds of Hope, uh, our current spring round, the deadline for applications is uh, April 15th uh, for our fall round. Uh, and I should say, if you are awarded uh, funds in that round, you can expect to see those funds uh, end of May, early June. Uh, and our fall round, uh, the deadline for applications is October 15th. And if awarded funds, you could expect to see them early December. So 
So Harry says there appears to be no requirement to provide any financial information about the organization requesting the grant. Is that correct? That is correct. We're not asking to see financial statements. We don't need to see your annual report. Um, we do not need that information. It is not a requirement of uh, our granting program. Of course, if you want to include that and if you think it helps paint that picture and uh, be in support of your request, absolutely, um, please do include that as supporting documentation. Um, Janet asks, if a contractor, so I assume this is in my example, so if a contractor donates his time or equipment is, is another funding for our 50%. So yeah, uh, gifts in kind can be considered part of your overall expenses. Um, so in the example, if your contractor is saying, you know what, I to do this work, I would cost $10,000, but I'll give you $5,000 uh, in kind of my time. That would be considered what part of your overall budgetary cost, because if you didn't use that person, you'd have to pay someone else that full $10,000. Absolutely. Um, so what's the difference between Seeds of Hope and Vision Grants? Are they both with the United Church of Canada Foundation? So the Seeds of Hope and Vision Grants, while similar, they are slightly different. They have different application processes. And uh, the Seeds of Hope is a foundation granting program, while uh, Vision Grants are a United Church of Canada granting program. Southampton United asks, do you apply for a specific grant within Seeds of Hope or does the foundation decide which fund the money comes from? <laughs> so that is a yes and no question. So yes, um, I believe it is question number, um, let me just quickly search through. Um, so it's question number three is asking what granting funds you're applying to. So again, that gives us a sense of where you see your program fitting and where you think we can draw down on the money from. That being said, the committee might decide, you know what, we have more money accessible here or this project fits better into this slot. And then we would se seamlessly uh, award any money from those different areas. So um I don't, I wouldn't hesitate on clicking wh where you think uh, you fit in and don't feel that if I choose this, then I'm stuck in that lane um, because we on the back end will find a way. And then that that process is in turn why I was saying earlier, apply for the amount that you need to up to that 50%, regardless of uh, maximums, because we have an ability to kind of work within those funds as well, where we can award 5,000 from here, 10,000 from there, another 10,000 from there to make up that $25,000 ask. Um, don't see any other questions. And I'm sorry if I, if I missed any, um, but if I did miss any or after this, you kind of thought, oh, I wish I asked that, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, Again, our email is grants at united-church.ca. Myself or any other foundation staff would be happy to ask, uh, to answer anything. Um, and Oh, we have one last question. What is the source of monies that create the pot for the United Church of Canada Foundation? Legacies, donations. Yep, so our funds are created by donors. Uh, uh, donors have given, um, for many of them, either they were set up by the foundation board, so... Uh, to help create this program, or they're set up by donors specifically themselves who said, you know what, I want to contribute to a granting program. I want to see the sustainability of United Church projects moving forward. Um, and then they created the long-term uh, fund within the foundation that helps support uh, that uh, and those projects. Great question. So I'm going to leave it there, um, but thank you for everyone that attended today, I hope you found this helpful. Um, please, again, if you have any questions or you want to just introduce yourself and chat more about your project, please do not hesitate to email or call us. Um, I would also welcome you to join our next webinar, which is in partnership with our friends from Genius Capital. It's coming up on Thursday, April 13th uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern or 10 a.m. Pacific. And it is titled, How to a Sustainable and Impacting Investing. So again, thank you everyone, take care.